your spiritual growth that God has for you and others. Please join Evangelist Renee Sellers every Friday right here on WHLJ 97.5 FM. Simulcasting with WHLJ AM 1400, Moultrie, Georgia. Welcome, Moultrie, Berlin, Doron, Thomasville, and all of the towns in between. WHLJ 97.5 FM, simulcasting with WHLJ AM 1400, Moultrie, Georgia. Good. Good morning, everybody. This is Evangelist Renee Sellers of the Upper Room Outreach Ministries in White Cross, Georgia, and we are live for this 1115 Faith in It Friday inspiration. I am coming to you this morning from John chapter 21, verses 14 through 17 and verse 19. I'm going to kind of piggyback and just briefly uh, share with you some of what I shared with them on last night. I'm reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible of John chapter 21, verse 14 through 17 and on down to verse 19, 14 through 17. If you're following along with me, <laughs> verse 17 through 19 this morning, this is one of the gospels this morning is we come from the New Living Translation. We are talking about Jesus this morning and it says this was the third time Jesus had appeared to his disciples since he had been raised from the dead. After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied, you, you know I love you. Uh, then Jesus says, then feed my lambs. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you. Then take care of my sheep. Jesus said a third time, he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. Go down to verse 19 and it says, Jesus said this to let him know by what kind of death he will glorify God. Then Jesus told him in two words, uh, follow me. Uh, I want to encourage you this morning to follow follow your leader, to follow uh, Jesus this morning. Uh, this morning, I am sharing with you this, and I want to share with you some statistics this morning, something that I shared on the prayer line this morning as we talked to one, a man of God about the culture that our people, young people are living in. And last night, I shared with them about the crisis, the challenge, and the charge. I shared those three aspects with them, the crisis, the challenge, Oh, and the charge. I want to encourage uh, people today that, you know, when the Lord gives you a dream or when a prophetic word is released, I encourage people to write those down in your journal as quick, quickly as you can. As I was preparing to minister on last night, I was reminded of a dream and a prophetic word that, that was related to the theme for last night, which was feed my sheep. We were celebrating a woman of God last night and their theme was feed my sheep. I found so much in the text from John chapter 21 and and I went back to my journal and I found a, a journal entry from March 29 2009 now this is a word of encouragement uh, Jesus told Peter follow me and I want to encourage you to follow Jesus last night I ministered from the aspect of following your leader your your church leader but and, and to follow Christ the chief shepherd your pastor will be the under shepherd but I want to encourage you today to follow Jesus listen March 9 2009 I wrote in my journal it was a Friday morning that was the day the Lord called me to preach. As I was lying there between asleep and awake, I heard the Spirit of the Lord tell me two times, feed my sheep, uh, feed my sheep. And again in 2009, June 23rd, 2009, during 5 a.m. prayer, uh, we were having 5 a.m. prayer in 2009, but once a week on Tuesdays. And we were praying for healing for those people that had called us and said, pray for my healing, pray for my body. I've been sick in this area, pray for me. Uh, we were praying for healing when the woman of God, one of my best friends who was on the line last week, Prophetess Evelyn Sterling, said these words during 5 a.m. prayer. She said, God is saying, pray for the souls. She said, what does it profit a man to pray for the whole world and lose his soul? We are praying for their healing. Uh, she said, the Lord said, pray for their souls. The sheep are going to the slaughter. People are losing their souls and we are allowing it, the Spirit of God said. The Lord said, feed my sheep. We are playing pity pat with the enemy. We are allowing him to come into our homes and we're allowing him to come into our churches. This is what the Spirit of the Lord said in June 23rd, 2000. Uh, 
2009. And listen, we are in a crisis, ladies and gentlemen. Our, our young people are in crisis. Our nation is in crisis. The body of Christ is in crisis. As I was reading that article that, that was emailed to me the other day, the article said that atheism is on the rise. I only have a few minutes to share this with you. Atheism is on the rise. And fewer people than ever have a biblical worldview in America. What does it mean that fewer people than ever have a biblical worldview? Pe listen, people who don't have a biblical worldview, they're not concerned about God. They're not concerned about their purpose. They're not concerned about eternity. They don't know and some don't care if God exists. A lot of people are talking about everything and everybody except God. We have social media now that is exposing us to everything except God. We have television that is exposing us to everything except God. Listen, our children can't even watch a decent cartoon anymore because there's so much perversion and 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 uh, uh, and, uh and wickedness on TV. And so the Generation Z, those people that were born between 1999 and 2015, their biblical worldview is on the decline. Only 4% of Generation Z even think about God or give, or give a thought to things that relate to eternity. Christianity is on the decline among baby boomers, those who were born between 1946 and 1964. Belief in God is on the decline among Generation X, those born between 65 and 79. I guess I would be a part of Generation Generation X. A biblical worldview is on the decline among millennials. Generation Y. Those born between 1978 and 1998. And as the study showed from uh, Barna and Impact 360, it, it stated and I quote, today's teens are less Christian and more confused about moral and spiritual truth than ever before. Now, now we are sheep. The Lord gives us sheep. He get, uh, 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 rather, He gives us shepherds rather so that the shepherd can feed the sheep. Who are the sheep? The sheep are Christ's followers. And we need sheep that are willing, listen, that are willing to impart into the people to help mature them, to help develop them, uh, to help reach and lead them, to help pour into them what the thus saith the Lord. We cannot uh, be, afford to be distracted. We cannot afford to get our focus in these last days. We cannot afford this because those generations, generation X, Y, Z, the, the, listen, the baby boomers and those that, that, the, that the studies show are falling away from God, that do not have a biblical worldview. You. They need to hear our voice. And be, listen, when the shepherd begins to speak into the sheep, listen, those that hear the word, those that are being taught and trained must be willing and must be bold enough to go out into the world and minister the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, you don't have to have a pulpit to do that because everybody's looking for a big platform. Everybody wants to speak at the big conference. Everybody wants to speak at the big arena. Everybody's looking for the big stage because they want to have a quote unquote platform. But can I help you today? If you really want to minister the gospel, if you really, really want to preach Jesus, if you really want to reach people, listen, do your work? Well, there's a platform on your job. There's a platform in your school. There's a platform at the jail. There's a platform in the hospital. There's a platform in the nursing home. Come on, somebody. You don't have to be on Facebook Live. You don't have to be on radio. And they, there are great tools to reach the, the nations. They are great tools to reach the uh, international uh, uh, international arena. But listen, if you don't have access to Facebook, if you don't have access to radio, guess what? Minister Jesus right where you are because somebody needs to hear your voice. Oh God, Mr. Lee, I didn't mean to get that passionate, but somebody needs to hear your voice. And sometimes we get distracted from the gospel message because listen, Jesus' desire for us is to preach the kingdom. Listen, Jesus preached the kingdom. John the Baptist preached the kingdom. Uh, his followers, the disciples preached the kingdom. And those of us who are followers of Jesus Christ, we must preach the kingdom. We must preach Jesus. We cannot get distracted from the gospel message. Listen, a lot of times we get so distracted from the gospel message that we preach at people and not to the people. We get distracted from the gospel message, listen, and we preach at people and tell them what they did to us from the pulpit instead of doing what the Bible says and go to them face to face. We preach at people and throw off and get sidetracked from preaching the word. I said last night, could this be one of the reasons that the belief in God is on the decline? Could this be one of the reasons that this generation of X, Y's and Z's don't want to come to our church? Could this be one of the reasons that they see so many of the 
the things that we do and they don't want to have anything to do with God. Can I help you this morning? It might, listen, those statistics might be true. Those statistics might be real, but can I help you? If we go out and let our light shine, if we truly follow Jesus, if we truly are ambassadors for Christ, these statistics can turn around. And listen, you can be a part of that turnaround. You can be a part of that turnaround if you simply decide to follow Jesus. And we had that crisis is that people are walking away, that people don't have a biblical worldview. The challenge that Jesus gave to Peter was, Peter, do you love me more than these? Then feed my lambs, feed my sheep, feed my followers. And the charge for you today, as it says in verse 19, is to follow me. Jesus told Peter to follow me. After three times, he said, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Another time he said, Peter, do you love me? Feed my, my sheep, feed my lambs. Peter, do you love love me. And Peter got a little frustrated that Jesus asked him, do you love me? Did Listen, three times, do you love me? Peter said, you know, I love you. Listen, p- three times, Peter, you denied me. So I listen, I got to know that you are going to be loyal this time. Three times you denied me. Look, you're getting frustrated because I asked you three times, do you love me? Peter, imagine how I felt when you denied me three times. Imagine how I felt, Peter, when you turned your back on me in my hour of need. Imagine, Peter, how I felt. But listen, as I studied this text about Peter and Jesus, when Jesus said, feed my sheep, I found that this text is more about redemption than anything else. It's about the grace of God, because even though Peter denied Jesus three times, Jesus was giving Peter another chance to make things right. Somebody ought to be glad today that we serve a God of not second, first chances and second chances, but we serve a God of multiple chances. But listen, it's time today to begin to truly follow Jesus. It's time today to truly walk by faith and not by sight. It's time today to truly let your light so shine before men that they see what you do and give God the glory. Hey, it's time for you today to truly Lord, oh, as 1 Corinthians 15 and 58 said, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Listen, knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. It's time for you that are listening to me today. Listen, Generation Z, listen, you're a believer, go out and minister to your peers. Generation X, are you a believer? Go out and minister to your peers. Generation Z, are you a believer? Somebody Somebody needs to hear your voice. Millennials and baby boomers, listen. Are you a follower of Jesus Christ? Somebody needs to hear your voice. And all you have to do is use whatever platform you have, whether it's your classroom or the boardroom, and minister Jesus Christ. Preach the kingdom right where you are. Go out into the hedges and the highways and compel the people to come. The Lord wants his house full, and he wants his house full of people who desire to follow him. That's all I have for today. God bless you. God keep you. Heaven smile upon you. Be encouraged. This is Evangelist Renee Sellers of the Upper Room with your Faith in It Friday inspiration. And my word today is I pray that this has inspired you to follow Jesus, that others may see your light and have a hunger to follow him too. God bless you. Have an awesome day. Hallelujah.